Hey everyone, today we are boarding the cruise. It's going on an 8 day cruise. We are going to different places and today is a boarding day and we are excited. We went past the port just now. Unfortunately, we couldn't record it. We are boarding at Venice right now and we're gonna get inside the ship. First, before the trip starts, let's take a complete look of how the ship looks outside and inside. Let's go. <laughs> This splendid ship was launched in 2010. The ship is 292 meters long and weighs a whopping 92,700 tons. The ship boasts of a cruising speed of 21.6 nautical miles, that's equivalent to 40 kilometers per hour or 24.9 miles per hour. The total ship costed around 450 million euros. The ship not only looks stunning on the outside, the interiors are designed well to give the guests a symphony of comfort, relaxation and fun. Ice in my veins, I've been driving this train. Years in this lane, there's no stop in this frame. Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play. How I like rearranged it to my own domain. Yeah, I got what it takes. Made lots of mistakes. Taking shots, skipping breaks. Feeling lost, feeling great. Popping off, singing straight. Never stop, never changed. All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah. The ship has a main bar and a lounge which is one among the other 12 bars that are available in different decks of the ship. There are two swimming pool areas one in the front of the ship and one at the back of the ship. The cabins are designed to give utmost comfort to the guests. We opted for a room with a balcony and we did enjoy it a lot. Up to 2,828 passengers can be carried in 1,130 cabins. There are five different restaurants and snack bars throughout the ship. You will be pampered with delicious food and mouth-watering desserts. The ship has its own casino where you could try your hand at winning something or losing it all. For kids, there are lots of activities. There is a separate play area on the top deck. And also there is a special arcade center where the kids can have fun on the move with different games and challenges available there and it's open 24 bar 7. For shopping lovers, you can also find a huge shopping mall inside the ship where you can buy nice goods or clothes as a souvenir. For everyone else, there's a lot of entertainments offered on the move. There are pool parties every evening.
For music lovers, there are live music events in the bar every evening. You will love this. There is also a theater on board where you will have an opportunity to witness different shows every evening. It was so much fun. you would not have a moment of boredom once on board the ship. There are so many things and so many fun events to be part of. And the best part is everything is included in the price. Although the cruise itself is a vacation, the most important part of the cruise is getting to visit different countries and destinations the cruise is sailing to. The cruise we booked is for 8 days. So the ship is going to different destinations and countries. We boarded the cruise in Venice. Our journey starts from Venice in Italy. From there, it would set sail to the most famous island in Greece, Mykonos. It, it takes about a day and a half from Venice to reach Mykonos. And then from Mykonos, we set sail to the beautiful Santorini in Greece. And from there to a city called Catacolon, also in Greece. From Catacolon, we sailed to Bari in Italy and then all the way back to Venice where we will disembark. It's gonna be fun. Since our port of embarkation is Venice in Italy, let's go around the city and see what Venice has to offer. Venice, the floating city built on water. It's not hard to fall in love with Venice. It's one of the most spectacular cities on the planet. City known for its canals, masks, bridges and much more. The entire city is filled with colorful architecture, pretty waterways and marvelous buildings. Where else in the world would you reach historic palazzos, churches and museums by boat? traveling along the endless maze of picturesque canals. This is a unique experience that's never available in any other cities in the world. This is exactly why Venice is popular. have heard of the iconic gondolas. Perhaps the most famous symbol of Venice, the city's beautifully decorated historic boats that are called gondolas. It will be a unique experience to sit on these and be rowed across the iconic places of Venice. Remember, there are other means of transportation to get around the city as well. There is a water bus, which is basically a ferry type of boat called Vaporetto. The prices per person is around 8 euros to travel through the city. There are many stops where you can get down, look around and hop on to another Vaporetto. Then there is this personal taxi that would cost around 120 euros for a 40 minutes round trip around the city. We took the 40 minute ride on taxi so we would have the freedom to record the city and show it to you. The sights of the city were mesmerizing. Venice is incredible. Although you may have seen it in pictures, you can't grasp how beautiful it is until you visit.
as we traveled on the taxi, we passed through some of the most famous landmark. Canal Grand or Grand Canal itself. Where we are sailing right now is the main canal. Think about it like a main street of a city. Then there are narrow canals, like the smallest streets in a city. This Grand Canal passes through the city from this end to the other end where there's the open sea. This is a church that dates back to the 17th century and it is called Chisa di San Simeon Piccolo, Church of San Simon Piccolo. Little further, we come to the most iconic location of Venice. You would have definitely seen this in movies or as a picture, the Rialto Bridge. The Rialto Bridge was first constructed in 11th century and reconstructed into the stone bridge in the 15th century. This is a famous romantic spot for tourists to ride on a gondola. Aside from this glamorous appearance, many shops and craft stores can be found around the Rialto Bridge. Most of these stores now cater to tourists, but this was actually an important hub for butchers, bakers and other merchants back in medieval times. This is one famous church in Venice, Basilica di Santa Maria della Salute. This is famous because this was built as a vow to Mary asking for an end to the plague that raged the city since 1630 and during which the city lost around 46,000 inhabitants. This gorgeous church was built in the 16th century and is one of the first sites of Venice visible to the travelers approaching by sea. This is easily one of the most important places in Venice, St. Mark's Square or Piazza San Marco. Piazza San Marco is the city's main public square and contains its most famous buildings such as St. Mark's Basilica and the Doge's Palace. It was established during the 9th century but adopted its current size and form in the 11th century. Back then, the Piazza San Marco is one of the most beautiful in the world. Even Napoleon called it the world's most beautiful drawing room. Overall, the beauty of Venice is incomparable. The famous king of France, Henry III, during his lifetime quoted that, If I were not king of France, I would choose to be a citizen of Venice. Yes, this shows how famous the city was and still is. Well, that was a long but exciting day. The timer is up. Now it's time to head back to our cruise ship and sail to the next destination, Mykonos in Greece. Before that, we need to have a sumptuous buffet dinner waiting for us in the cruise. This is one delicious fish. This is veal with some kind of sauce, which I don't know, and this is capers. I'm gonna try it. It's really delicious. Awesome variety, fresh. Now time to head back to the cabin, call it a day, have a good night's sleep and wake up tomorrow in Mykonos. What's up guys? Today is day three and we reach Mykonos, Greece. <laughs> at 8 p.m. so it's after sunset and it's dark we want to go around the city and check out how the nightlife is tonight we're gonna to see how Mykonos is at night and tomorrow we have the entire day at hand we're gonna walk around the city in the beauty of sunlight let's go
We went for a quick walk around the city at night. As you can see, it was quite alive even at this time. The shops were still open and tourists were still walking around the city. We gonna head back to the ship right now and get some sleep and come back here tomorrow morning again. It will definitely be more exciting to see this beautiful city during the day. Today is day four and we are still at Mykonos. Last night we went around the city. It was beautiful at night. Today we're gonna go around the city and check it out how, it, how Mykonos is during daytime. Let's go. In order to get to Mykonos, we need to get on to a tender boat from a cruise ship because the cruise ships are not allowed to dock at Mykonos port due to lack of space. So our cruise ship is anchored like 300 meters or probably around 400 meters away from the land. It was a great opportunity to feast on the beauty of this magnificent ship as we leave for Mykonos on this tender boat. It wasn't a long journey, it took like 5 minutes to reach the port. From there, we are on our own to enjoy the beauty of the city. You will be welcomed by many restaurants or taverns on the way before you reach the main city center. Yes, there are still taverns in Mykonos, since it was once pirates' favorite hangout island. The fairy tale alleys of Mykonos town is known for its narrow pedestrian only cobble streets lined by whitewashed cubic houses. This is where you will find art galleries and souvenir shops all along the city. We were surprised and excited at the same time to see the shops everywhere around us. As we were walking around this fairy tale like city, we came across some famous places to visit. The Paraportiani Church. This is a famous church dating back to the 14th century. It is well known for its unique architecture. Walking from there, we reach one of the most famous places in Mykonos called Little Venice. It's called Little Venice due to its picturesque view. Little Venice is one of the most romantic places in Mykonos. This neighborhood is complete with elegant and gorgeous old houses that are situated dangerously on the edge of the sea. There are plenty of restaurants around these areas offering not only good food but also stunning view as we dine. If you were to picture Mykonos in your mind's eye, you would likely conjure up images of cool waters, a salty sea breeze, white buildings, and also the most famous white Mykonos windmills grazing the rocky landscape. Yes, the windmills are the highlights of Mykonos. The windmills are the first thing seen when coming into the harbor as they stand on a hill overlooking the area. They were used to grind grains back in the day. Today, it's used as a photo spot for us tourists. Overall, Mykonos was a beauty that should never be missed. If you already visited Mykonos, comment below your experience for all of us to see. If you haven't yet visited, please include this in your bucket list of places to visit. It's definitely worth it. So um, we went around Mykonos today. It was beautiful. The weather was excellent. It was sunny, blue sky, blue and green sea. The streets were so beautiful. All the buildings were in white. That was a treat to the eyes. And there were lots and lots of shopping places. We had enough today. 
it's around 3.30. We're gonna head back to our ship, which is over there. So that's our ship, the Costa. We're gonna head back there and we need to take a shower and call it a day. Pretty hot day, but overall we had excellent fun. Now the next stop is Santorini. So tomorrow the ship is gonna sail to Santorini and it's gonna be an exciting day. Now, it's time to bid goodbye to Mykonos, get on the tender boat, head back to our ship and get to the bar and order ourselves some nice cold mocktails. Next stop, the world famous Santorini. So, overnight we sail from Mykonos and reach Santorini early in the morning. Today is day 5 and we are anchored at Santorini. It's the most famous place in Greece and we're gonna visit that place. This is my first time as well, so I believe it's gonna be very beautiful and I'm quite excited for that. So, let's go. The early next morning of day 5, we docked at Santorini. The view of the city from a cabin balcony was stunning. Santorini is known for the view of the village on top of a cliff. What's fascinating is that Santorini was formed due to an underwater overlapping shield volcanic eruption that happened in approximately 1500 BC and the layers on the rock are still visible on the mountain. Our ship was literally anchored in the crater or the caldera of the volcano and the village is built on top of the crater. Same like Mykonos, we first need to get onto a tender boat from the ship to get to the port of Santorini. It was a quick 10 minute journey. Today our plan is to visit two most beautiful villages of Santorini, Ia and Fira. From the port, we took the bus to reach the Ia village. It's a 40 minute ride from the port to the village. The bus ride from the port was scenic as it climbed up the mountain. Once we reached the village, we walked around the busy streets of Ia. Ia village is considered the most beautiful village in Santorini. If you have looked up Santorini on the internet, you are sure to have seen white buildings with blue domes against a beautiful sea with cliffs in the background, yeah? Those pictures are from this very village in Santorini. Believe me, it was like a fairy tale scene. There were tourists lined up to take that magical picture for their social media. The view of the sea from here is magical. From here, we walked up to this iconic church pictured in most postcards of Santorini. This famous six bell church was indeed marvelous. The entire village is built on volcanic lava and standing dangerously on the edge of the cliff is a sight to marvel. After walking for a while, we headed back to our bus and headed to the capital of Santorini, the village of Fira. This is that village on top of the cliff that we saw from the cruise ship balcony this morning. The village located at the middle of the island is a perfect spot to have a clear view of the crater or the caldera. We also got a clear view of the active submerged volcano which last erupted in 1950. The city view from up here with wide cubic buildings. 
stacked up at the edge of the cliff overlooking the beautiful sea. Cruise ships anchored near the active volcano is simply beautiful. The Fira village attracts many tourists due to the big shopping streets. There are several shops all along the way. Jewelry shops, souvenir shops, Greek sandal shoes and the delicious Greek ice creams as well. This is where you can get olive oil based ice creams. We tried it from a shop called Zotos and I highly recommend this shop. After walking around this village, we decided to head back to the port. There are few ways to get down, either by a cable car from the cliff to the port or by walking down a stairway, enjoying the views or also you can take the donkey ride down to the port. That would be a unique experience, wouldn't it? For the sake of time, we decided the faster option and took the cable car down to the old port. From the port, we took the tender boat back to our cruise ship that was anchored just minutes away. It was indeed an awesome day at the most beautiful destination of Greece. Wow, that was an exciting day. We walk around, although it was pretty hot, we had an exciting day walking around the city. It was beautiful, as you just saw. And now, right now, we are on the balcony having a look at this beautiful city, which is on top of a mountain. Um, <clears throat> so we are done for today. We're gonna relax and call it a day. And tomorrow, we are going to Catacolo. A while later, we got to the theater to watch some shows. What a beautiful day. We're gonna head back to our cabin and call it a day. Can't wait for tomorrow. Next stop, Catacolo in Greece. <laughs> So today we just woke up, we got ready and today we docked at Katakolon. In Greek they call it as Katakolo but either way both are correct. So we're gonna go around the city, I've heard it's a very small small town. So we're gonna go around, walk around, we are not going anywhere else and, uh, and there is a famous place here called the Olympia which is the first Olympic Games were held like uh, thousands of years before but we are not going there because it's just kind of ruins and stuff like that and you have to drive for like 40 minutes or 45 minutes so we thought no we'll skip this one we'll sit this one out so we're gonna walk around the small town look at the shops maybe buy something and there are many famous shops here there's one particular shop uh, it's a honey shop which we heard of we're gonna visit that today and we're gonna buy some honey and some Greek olive oils let's see let's go overnight we sailed from Santorini to Catacolone and docked here early in the morning we are first going to have a breakfast and then head outside for a quick walk around the city. Catacolon is a small port and beach town in Western Greece and it's most famous for Olympia, the ancient site where the Olympic Games were born in the 8th century BC. Basically the reason why cruise ships stop here at all. Being not so into ruins and also since it will be a two hour journey to Olympia, we skipped it and walked around the city on our own. This seaside town is a textbook description of a small and peaceful fishing town with fishing boats tied down all along the walking path. The other side is full of souvenir shops, little cafes and tavernas aligned with restaurants and bars admiring the sea. We heard a lot about a famous honey shop here. Rumor has it that it's one of the best honey shop you'll ever visit. So we went to visit it. There are many varieties of honey available here. We met the owner of the shop who kindly invited us and introduced us to the many products that were there. Thanks for coming here to Katakolon. Just know this is local honey. We're a family business since 1936. My grandfather started. We produce different types of honey like thyme, flower, oak and pine. 
I hope uh, you visit us one day. We can explain everything. You can try Honeycomb. All the products are made from our family. And I hope uh, it's worth it because we try here to give you the opportunity to taste real honey from uh, our place. We're going to give you memories from our land and I hope to see you here. We bought some of the products and by far they were the best honey we ever tasted. If you ever visit Catacolon, do not miss this shop. After we bought a couple of Greek olive oil bottles, we decided to head back to the ship. So today we went around the town. It was so exciting. Although it's a very small town, I did not expect it to have so many restaurants and so many shops. And right now the ship has started moving and uh, the next stop is tomorrow morning to Bari in Italy. So we are leaving Greece and we are sailing towards Bari and that would be our last stop before we reach Venice and there we're gonna disembark. Once on board, we had enough time to go around the ship and relax on the top deck of the ship. Before we head back to our cabin, we are going to the buffet restaurant in the ship to have a delicious dinner. So today we are served with a variety of fish, chicken, and veal steak in wine sauce. Mmm, it was really delicious. From here, we set sail in the evening to our last and final stop of our trip. For now, we are bidding goodbye to Greece and we are heading to Bari in Italy. We sailed overnight from Catacolon to Bari in Italy. This would be our last stop of this cruise journey. So today we woke up, got ready. The ship is docked at Bari, our last stop of the trip. So Bar Bari is a very small fishing village. It was nothing but a group of fishermen came there and started a small community and that stands today as this famous town called Bari. And the ship has docked here. We're gonna go around. We don't have much time. We have to come back at 1 p.m. today. The ship's gonna sail to Venice at 1.30. So we, they expect us to be in, in the ship at one o'clock today. We just had our breakfast. We're gonna relax a bit, buy a couple of drinks from the bar and then we're gonna walk around the city and uh, see what, what Bari has to offer. Let's go. Bari is located in the Puglia region of Italy, all the way in the south, the coastal city that has existed for more than 2,000 years. Let's now get down to the city of Bari and see what it has to offer. As soon as we set foot in the city, we were captivated by the narrow winding streets. The maze-like streets are like a puzzle. It is really nice to walk around the city. Bari is known for the countless shops that you would come across as you walk along. We are going to take some time to walk around visiting the shops along our way. By far, these are the cutest souvenirs I've ever seen in all of my travel. They are made out of real pastas and even out of real breads and shells. From outfits to vegetables to snacks, you can find them all in every corner of the city. If you think of Italy, you have to conjure up the images of pasta. One cannot miss the homemade pasta which are famous in Bari. You could buy them right outside the home of the citizens. There are stalls in every corner of the city. And remember, these are handmade. You can also buy homemade ingredients to go with the pasta as well.
This city offers another unique experience like none other. You can buy freshly made pasta. There is an entire street where women sit outside their homes making handmade pasta right in front of you. A tradition that is over thousands of years old. This was an unique experience to just watch them make it with ease. These are later sun-dried and packed to be sold. And believe me, they were sold like hotcakes. This city boasts of few famous landmarks as well. The Basilica of San Nicola. Constructed in the 11th century, this basilica dedicated to Saint Nicholas has a Romanesque style and stands proudly in the center of the old town of Bari near the harbor. Little further away from here, you will come across the church of San Sabino. This church is famous for its tall tower that sticks out in the skyline of the city. As you approach San Sabino, you will undoubtedly recognize the simple shining white exterior. However, it's this simplicity that gives it a noble and attractive look. Towards the west of the city, you would come across the famous Bari Castle. One of the first thing you'll notice is how well the castle exterior has weathered the years. Given that it's nearly 900 years old, it was built in the 11th century by Norman King Roger. It features a traditional design with a central courtyard, four main guard towers and is surrounded by a moat on three sides. Despite the castle's immense age, it still remains in fantastic condition and has its original walls and towers still standing. As we were heading back to the port, we passed through this famous city square called Piazza Mercantile. We came across a street performer singing an Italian song that enhanced our Italian experience. Could certainly listen to this all day, but it's time to head back to the ship and call it a day. That was a long day. It was short, but we felt it was a long day because there was so much to do in that town. We thought it's going to be a small city, small boring city. That was something that was on back of my head. But when we started walking the narrow streets, which you would have, which you would have seen now, we saw the old cathedral and the old castle, which was so exciting. It was pretty nice. We walked for like three to three, three and a half hours, but it was never boring. Not a moment of silence over there. The city was bustling with tourists shops and everything it was so nice and that's it for today and tomorrow the ship is sailing to venice that's where we're gonna disembark and uh, drive, be on our way to germany the ship is slowly leaving the port for the last time in our trip although we had a memorable seven days on board i would like to admit that we are a bit gloomy that the cruise ship is coming to an end but hey, there is always another trip. A 
Early next morning of day eight, a ship reached Venice, a port of disembarkation. Hey, Kaden. Hi. How's it going? Going well. We have come to the fine last day of our trip. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Did you have fun? I had so much fun. I couldn't recommend it enough. It was great. The bars and everything. I loved the breakfast. I loved everything. The room service was top notch. Everything was great. And now the million dollar question. Would you come back on a trip on this ship again, given a chance? Yeah, I'll go. I'll take it. Cool. I don't even care where it goes. I just want to be in this in this place. It's so fun. You should go there too. Remember this, Costa Deliciosa. Play that. You gotta go there. Also, we have come to the last day of the trip. Yeah. How much did you like it? Oh, I loved it. What was the best part of the cruise that you enjoyed the most? Everything. Everything was wonderful. The rooms were super clean. Every day I came here, the room service was amazing. And it was so beautiful to look outside in the balcony, to look at the waters, the beautiful blue water and the sky and then we had delicious food and the service is amazing amazing and all the crew are so pleasant they are always willing to help the passengers and there is no place you would feel that you are left alone you have that feeling of being at home you're pampered you're pampered to the core and you feel like a queen <laughs> Definitely, pampered is the right word I would say. Yeah. So it's time to leave now, guys. Mm -hmm. The ship has docked in Venice. Yes. I think we have to get out now. Yes. See you later. Thanks, guys, for watching. Check out our channel for more videos. Bye. It's time to say goodbye to this beautiful ship and be on our way back home to Germany with loads of memories to cherish. Join our journey, we are always on the move visiting new countries and new places each time. Don't forget to subscribe and watch our other videos, they are in the description, you will love it.